Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night. We welcome you to the start of this new season with Episode 1, A City That Never Sleeps. Now, before we return to those blood-warm moral waters of the world of darkness, let me say first that we are very happy to be back with you here tonight. If you joined us for New York by Night Season 1, welcome back. We missed you, and we are very grateful to you for coming back to share this season with us. If you're joining us now for the very first time, welcome to the family. What you're about to see is an actual play of Vampire the Masquerade, a tabletop role-playing game of personal and political horror. It is a story about some young vampires in New York City. Let's meet those vampires now. Hello everyone, I'm Nora Ibrahim and I play Kalita the Ventru. Hi everyone, I am Cynthia Marie. I play Coco the La Sombra. Hello everybody, I'm Xander Genre playing Braun the Nosferatu. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Wynne Bradley and I am playing Kim the Toreador. Welcome vampire. Now, I mentioned that this is a horror story. It is. And so it incorporates and includes some mature and dark content and themes. You will find this episode's content warnings along with streaming information on this channel. We take consent and safety very seriously here. I know the player's lines and veils, and we will respect them throughout the story. Now let's thank some people. We'd like to thank Dogmite Games for this beautiful new New York by Night storyteller screen. We would like to thank Renegade Game Studios for making sure that we have all the hunger dice we could possibly need. Black Magic Design, thank you for these fantastic cameras and their supporting equipment so that we can come to the family tonight in unliving color. And then finally, we would like to thank Backblaze, the cloud backup and storage service. And remember, Yev is canon. As a prologue, let's think about New York City itself. It's impossible to hear the words New York City and not have some image come to mind. And it's almost impossible to have two people's images coincide. To one person, New York City is a den of iniquity and danger. To another, it is a cradle of culture. To a third person, it's a financial wonderland of opportunity. And to a fourth, it's a strange juxtaposition of phenomenal wealth and terrible poverty. It's Gotham, it's the Big Apple, it's the gateway to America, and it is indeed a city that never sleeps. It's all of that, more, and none at all. And in this city, this global icon, there are vampires hiding in plain sight, trying to conceal their true nature from the mortals around them. It's not easy to survive this way, but it is necessary. The danger of discovery is very real, often dangerous, and sometimes fatal. Many, many dozens, probably hundreds of the undead call this city their home, but we are concerned tonight only with four of them. A coterie of fledgling kindred who claim membership in the Camarilla sect and who are new to the night. They're about to begin a struggle to know this city and to know themselves. They will grapple with the beast within, and they will face what it means to make the most difficult choices any kindred can make. With this firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story.
Let us begin this new season with a little lore, a little kindred history. New York City was, at the brink of the new millennium, a battleground between two rival kindred sects, Camarilla and their ancient enemy, the Sabbat. Home to millions of mortals and hundreds of vampires, the city shook as their conflict took the form of economic espionage, political manipulation, and outright physical violence on and below the streets. In the end, Camarilla succeeded in driving the Sabbat out of New York City. The Camarilla rule was unsettled immediately after this war, but it has, in the last two decades since the end of the conflict, solidified into a more or less stable configuration under the guidance of its prince, Helene Panhard. More willing to bend a bit to accommodate reality, the prince has helped New York's kindred build what seems a stable foundation on which to pursue their individual and collective goals and influences, at least until now. But to the victor go the spoils, and in this case, the spoils are Manhattan and Brooklyn and Queens and, well, everything, really, except the Bronx, which nominally belongs to the Anarch movement. But the Anarchs are not our concern tonight. Our attention is on the Camarilla, the so-called ivory tower, and the kindred who uphold its traditions. The Camarilla advises its youngest, newest members that in order to rule the night, they must become the very thing they fear. They must become their own monsters. So where in New York are we? Well, imagine it with us now. A very expensive five-star boutique hotel in central Manhattan. Untold millions of dollars have gone into furnishing this building and every detail from the marbled neo-Roman fountain in the foyer to the heavy velvet drapes, from the gorgeous flower arrangements to the butter soft leather furniture has been selected with an eye toward invoking a sense of lavish but tasteful beauty. The mortals know this hotel as the Sterling. Kindred know it as a safe place to meet. And there are mortals here too, of course. Concierge staff, efficient bell captains, world-weary bartenders, tired travelers, perhaps a minor celebrity on a press tour, all blissfully unaware that there are four visitors to this lobby that are not what they seem. A dark and inviting jazz bar lies just off the lobby. You can hear the sound of the musicians tuning their instruments and the excited anticipatory murmur of their audiences as you wait in the lobby to which you have been invited. Uh, sir, you know, we do have a dress code. Maybe, uh, could, I, could I get you a jacket from um, the cloakroom maybe? Do you have a problem with me? And what I'm wearing at this particular juncture. Well, the dress code is different. I've got two dress codes right here, all right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Perhaps you'd care to wait here and I'll I'll, I'll find someone in management to talk to you. You know what? Never mind. I'll just wait over here, out of the view of everybody. Oh, would you? (sighs) Thank you. I appreciate it. (laughs) You know, manager's kind of a... Uh, anyway, can I get you a drink from the bar while you're waiting? For, uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking for this guy, Rafferty. Have you heard of him? Perhaps you should wait right here, sir. What was your name? Uh, my name? Yeah. Farrell, sir. Farrell. Good to know. For later. Farrell. He makes a hasty retreat away from your direction. Fucking help. Yeah, you, know, you are attracting a few sidelong glances from the well-dressed 
mortals in the lobby. If anybody has a problem, they can take it up with me face to face. Huh? I'll spook them. They look at me for too long, just a little. <gasps> I'm fairly certain that all of you overheard. It was almost impossible to miss. <sighs> Gotta make a fucking scene, do you? Excuse me, princess. You know, there are better ways to handle things than violence. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. What? You gonna seduce them into not letting me wear a jacket? I'm sorry, I am a lady of the church. I do not enjoy seducing people like that. Oh, I'm sorry, you're gonna proselytize them until I can wear my clothing in peace. You will shut your trap and stop speaking to me like that, you understand? Yeah. Are you, uh, are you lost? No, wait a second. Do you know this Rafferty guy? I heard someone yes. say, Rafferty, we all here for the same reason. That's why I'm here. <sighs> Looks like I got the same invitation. You snuck up on me, Jesus. Are you cold? No. Yeah, no, yeah. Are you cold? No. What Are happened you? to your lip? You should see the other guy. All right. What's your name, sweetheart? I'm Kim. Kim, I'm Braun. Don't mess with me. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I think <laughs> we're getting off on the wrong foot here. Oh, yeah? And what do we call you? My name's Kalita. Kalita. No need to be harsh with me. Of course not. It is my pleasure to serve you in any capacity that I can. No, that's not fair. I could see why, I could see why you were called. And your name? The one who belongs to the church? Just a lady who enjoys the word of God sometimes. Mm. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> ah, my name's Coco. Ah. Yes. Coco, nice to meet you. Likewise. I, too, believe in a higher power, and I think all of us have been saved. I believe that I am a higher power. What? I don't know. Well, I believe I was asked to be here, and I don't appreciate being told that I am not up to a dress code, so if we could hurry this along. Do you not have a coat with you or something? Not at present. We can get you a coat. If you want one. Fine. Fine. The young man, Farrell, who addressed you previously, approaches you again, his uh, feet moving slowly, perhaps even reluctantly, in your direction. As the jazz bar begins its evening performance, he offers a dark sport coat. I'll take it and I'll tie it around my waist. That's not, well, yeah, okay. You're um, gonna tell me how to wear things too now? Mm. Come at me, fucker. It's not necessary, sir. I'm just here to tell you that Mr. Rafferty has been a little delayed and you'll be invited upstairs in just a few minutes. So if you could make yourselves comfortable, that's just fine. Thank you, Farrell. Of course. Nice to see you again, Miss Kalita. Always a pleasure to see you. Is there anything I can get you? Um, at the moment, no. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the quartet's on stage. You know how to get yourself a drink. Um, if anybody else needs anything in the meantime, I'm happy to help. Thank you, Farrell. My name's Farrell, just like it says on the badge. Kalita, you've been here before? Yes, not often, but we have conducted business here. So you know Rafferty? I do. What sort of business do you conduct? Whatever he asks of me. Uh, not like that, oh, asshole. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. I, I feel like 
We also got off on the wrong foot. Uh, it's very unprofessional of me. I lost my temper. Sorry. It's funny. I thought all of us who turned were of a certain demeanor, but you're quite different. Good thing to say to other people. It what? makes me feel special and appreciate it. I think being different is wonderful. All of us are different from the like out there. I think that's mm. very nice. I appreciate it. It's not often I'm called beautiful. A couple of patrons on their way into the jazz bar make an obvious show of stepping around you. They glance sideways and back, shaking their heads as they pass. Do you got something to say? As a matter of fact, I do. The woman with him tugs on his arm and says, no, 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 we, we're gonna be late. They're waiting for us. No, it's, it's okay. Look, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Nice coat. Thank you. It's a Lona. You don't say. Have a nice night. You too. See, Standards. you just gotta know how to talk to people. Standards are just falling here. It's just not, yeah, man. Do you have a problem as I activate awe? Mm -hmm. No rouse check required. You don't have to risk getting hungrier, but you do become, if possible, more appealing, alluring, attractive. Um, problem. Uh, it's quite you know, rude. Not that I remember. Quite rude to say such things to a stranger. Are you, um, yeah, probably. Are you going to the jazz bar? I, um, his date looks appalled and really deeply offended. She's I'm standing there with her hands you. on her, her hips, and you can tell that he's gonna. Buddy, do you realize you got somebody else on your arm? Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'd get to step in if I were you. Um. See you around. No. <laughs> Bye. Hey. She grabs him by the arm and practically frog marches him into the jazz bar. Hey, Kalita. You can hear the sound of angry conversation in their wake. Thank you for that. Uh, sometimes I have a problem and I, I stand out and the thing you do, it's useful. Listen, the only problem is with them. See, it's guys like that, that just like to peacock and they see people like you as a way to build themselves up and sometimes you need to show them who really wears the pants, so. I like your way of thinking. Mm. Don't let guys like that get to you. Never do. Good. What's your deal though? You're like, spooky. Um, I don't feel like that's the right word for creepy. me as a person. I'm not creepy. No. I'm perfectly normal. No, oh. For us, I feel. Um, I knew to town, and ah, that's I, what I smell. Uh, 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 nothing, just freshness, newness. Not do I smell? No, no, no. You're not like spoiled by the city, you know. It means tainted by the city. How long have you been here? Long enough. I'm settled, but I was instructed to contact Rafferty about, well, for help. Really. Mm. You need help? With well, something? I don't. I'm not in peril immediately. Oh. I just. I, I'm getting comfortable with this being this way. Oh, I see. I see. Oh. So you're new, new. I'm not so new, new. It's just a lot of that time wasn't in one place. So now that I'm settled, I'm ready to put down some roots and. Find a mission. Hmm. Well, it seems like we're in the right place, but boy, nobody can keep an appointment around here. What the fuck? Um, we're, <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir, to make you wait, but Mr. Rafferty is ready now. If you'll follow me. All right, yeah, let's go. Lead the way. He does lead the way through the lobby 
past the elevators, down a marbled corridor, to a velvet rope, which he removes for you with a little bit of flourish and ceremony, and ushers you into a doorway, which proves to be a private elevator. He follows you in, and producing a key card, he punches for the top floor. So um, we're going up. Uh, obviously, you know where we're going, Miss Kalita. Um, we're going up to Mr. Rafferty. Mm -hmm. I, I, we're going now, I promise mm -hmm. you. Yes, right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not going to, can we have it back, maybe? Yeah. And he's, I'll just toss it over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. The elevator ride ends mercifully swiftly. And the door is open. So where are we now? The view up here is breathtaking here at the very top of the building. You have an uh, unobstructed sight line of Central Park and the famous surrounding cityscape. and You can see quite a lot of the world's most iconic skyline. Vaulted ceilings and tasteful decoration mark each and every room of this large suite. The decor follows a subdued off-white color scheme creating a sense of soft natural um, unobtrusiveness if you take the time to look though you'll see that every piece of furniture and fixture is perfectly detailed bringing it together in aesthetic perfection the whole effect is one of tasteful opulence and presiding over all this standing near that beautiful view next to the windows is a tall, athletic, silver-haired individual wearing gray turtleneck, slacks, and highly polished loafers, and a welcoming smile. Good evening, good evening. Please, please come in. Kalita. Hello. He crosses over to you and takes both of your hands, if you allow it. Of course. Thank you very much for coming on such short notice. I always make time for you. I do appreciate it. Please, everyone, make yourselves comfortable. I'm sure you have many questions tonight. I'm happy to provide answers for you. Now, have we all met? Briefly. Yes, mm. in the lobby. Does anybody make themselves comfortable, or do you remain standing? I remain standing until I get the approval to sit down. Mm -hmm. I would actually like to remain in the back of the room as close to the shadows as possible and just stay mm -hmm. silent standing. The uh, recessed lighting here is soft, indirect. And there are shadows, nothing dark enough to conceal yourself in completely, but enough to feel a little less uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I assume there's a couch situation. Yeah, there are several couch situations and easy chairs and... I sit in the middle of a couch and I manspread. It's really comfortable. Yeah. This leather is very soft. I find the center of the room... Well, the center of where everyone is either standing or sitting, and I sit there. Kiam, what impression are you trying to give with your demeanor, your attitude, your body language? What I'm do you trying want? to be compliant. I'm trying to get everyone to at least to like me a little. Um, I'm trying to remain visible in the center of attention. And I'm also trying to stay in a place where I can see everyone. And you want to keep everyone within your eye line, in your sight line, as it were. Yes. Mm hmm what about you, Braun? What impression are you trying to give as you manspread on the very expensive sofa? It's all about intimidation, baby. I'm just here to show that we're not to be pushed around. I know that we're gonna give him some orders or whatever, but mm. just showing that I'm my own person, but I, respectfully. Respectfully intimidating? Yeah. Well, let's see if you can pull it off. Yeah. Yeah, 
Let's make it um, manipulation and no. Let's make it strength and intimidation. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, we got one success. Well, if he's intimidated, Mr. Rafferty gives no such impression. But he doesn't seem offended either. I'm moving up. Coco, what do you want to convey? I'd like to ingratiate myself with Rafferty, so even though I'm standing closer to the shadows, because that's where I am most comfortable, um, it is a sign of respect uh, for Rafferty. Um, I want nothing more to please him. Hmm. A complicated message. Let's make it for you. Charisma and persuasion. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> well, we're going for it already. It's a bestial failure. A bestial failure. Now, you feel the beast resentfully snarl inside your chest, your gut, your head. Who does he think he is? This strutting popinjay. Who is he? To behave this way. You should take him out right through those windows. Weep time. I cannot do that right now. I have to show that I am merciful. You have several options. You can, of course, take a point of superficial willpower damage and re-roll up to three failed regular dice. You can give in to the beast and let it have its way. And that's it. This is not the time to give in to the piece right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. that take that superficial point yeah. of willpower damage. Yeah. Okay. Mark that off on your sheet, please. And re-roll up to three of those failed dice. Just not the, uh, mm -hmm. not the hunger die. Oh, same roll. <laughs> Still a total yep. failure. Not one success in the entire roll. It's as though you're no longer who you are. Your fangs bare, your eyes blaze, and they come over darker, 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 pitch black until there's no iris left. Now, The clan compulsion of the La Sombra is ruthlessness. Until you are able to succeed at projecting the kind of impression and person you want to be, you can't do anything else in this scene. Nothing matters to you now except overcoming your failure and proving that you are who you say you are. What impression does Kalita wish to give? Kalita wishes to impress upon her sire that she shows the utmost respect for him. Hmm. Oh, Well, I can see that this is going to be a very, very interesting association. If you're all comfortable now, I'll explain what's happening. Mr. Braun, what yeah. do you know about the Anarch movement? Please, Mr. Braun was my father. Just call me Braun. Hmm. I don't know, a bunch of people running willy-nilly, sorry, excuse me, kindred, not people. Uh, 
no laws, they pretty much do whatever they want to do, but since we are like we are, they end up killing each other. So that's why we got the Camarilla. A apt, if incomplete, explanation. You gotta know what I gotta know. That's yes. all I gotta know. The court. The prince. The primogen. The sheriff. Others are concerned about some recent unrest among the Anarch movement. We allow them to stay in the Bronx. Do you want us to fuck them up? Perhaps another time, perhaps another night, Mr. Braun. Their previous leader, an individual named Callahan, was recently murdered. Now, oh, yes, the final death. The last death. How did uh, how did they uh, how did they do that? No one seems to know, and I don't particularly care. Nobody liked him anyway. Oh. Some new leader has already risen to take his place. An individual by the name of, and I'm not making this up, Torque. What? Mm, like the automotive term. I know, right? Sounds cool. Sounds tacky. Uh, I'll have to go with my child. Tackier than cool. Oh, you? Yeah. And then he's your... Yeah. Yes. I know, isn't it cute? Oh. Uh, Editorial comment. Just peanut gallery. Hmm. Yes, Kalita is, in fact, my child. That's so nice that uh. you remained with your sire. Not so for you, unfortunately. Well, is it so common? Hmm. Well, the Ivory Tower does prefer that sires provide adequate instruction for their child or before they are released to run about the burrows, but these times are unusual and they may get more unusual still. The Anarchs believe that they're not allowed in Manhattan. It's a useful fiction. This island has something like one and a half million mortals living in it. How would we even know if they were here? It's not like we have kindreds posted guarding every bridge and tunnel. Oh, you don't? Okay. No, we don't. There aren't quite that many of us. Mm. It's true that when we do discover Anarchs, we tend to show them that they aren't welcome on our doorstep, but they believe they can't come. And that's useful. How are their numbers compared to ours? That's something we would very much like to know, Kalita. Very much. Things were stable with Callahan. He said a lot of words, but did very little. This torque is of a different sort. We are concerned that he may actually convince the Anarchs to live up to their reputation. We are working on it. There are several members of the court, including the sheriff, who are investigating. But it's of concern. There is a, hmm, I can't believe I'm going to say this, a a rebel leader from the free states, from Los Angeles, running loose in the city. And she has been seen in the Bronx. Her name is Annabelle Bruja Clan. She's trouble. If you run across her, let us know. Can we take her out? Uh... Hmm. If you think you can, and you think you can do it discreetly, Mr. Braun. No objections. First part, yeah, second part, meh. Hmm. Well, discretion is very, very important. Your sires have all mentioned the six traditions, I know, but we're going to go over them again one more time, just to be sure. Now, Coco, you are fixated ruthlessly on proving yourself. Is there anything you'd like to do to 
readdress the situation. I'd like to try to recite the six traditions, but right now they're not coming to me, so. Well, let's try to recall them. Your sire has in fact told you an interpretation of them, of course. Yes. But considering your clan provenance, the interpretation may or may not be accurate. Let's make a roll, please. Assemble a dice pool. Let's make it, um, mm, woof. Difficult to recall information. Let's make it intelligence and insight. A risky roll for you. Remember to add your hunger die. One success. One success. Well, you recall, of course, the most important tradition. The first one. The oldest one. The masquerade. Yep. Don't ever break the masquerade. Yes. If you respect no other rule, although I encourage you to respect them all, that one is the most important. Well done, Miss Coco, well done indeed. I can see that your sire, my old acquaintance, has at least done some service for you. Yes, I also do recall something about cleaning up your own messes. Mm-hmm. The tradition of don't getting caught. Mm. The masquerade is paramount for us. We survive and remain free from the predations of hunters and other vampires and other things by hiding in plain sight. The masquerade allows us to do this. We pretend to be mortal. We look mortal. We act mortal, we dress mortal. But I must admit that even the best of us make mistakes. And sometimes fortune goes against us. So, as Miss Coco reminds us, the corollary to the masquerade, to the first tradition, is don't get caught. If you break it, clean up your mess. Conceal the evidence of your mistake, and all will be well. As for the other rules, several don't apply to you at this time. The tradition of progeny, of not siring without permission, has of course been rendered academic by the fact that you are here. As has the accounting, which of course means that your sires are responsible for you until you are released. Hospitality is still important. When you come to a place ruled by another kindred, you should make yourself known. Introduce yourself. Obey the customs. The rule of domain the prince takes very seriously. The tradition of domain means that in the place that you call yours, your word is law. Well, perhaps that's your haven. Or maybe one night you'll be lucky enough to own a piece of this city yourselves. And when you do, you will be its ruler, and all the kindred who visit you there will owe you respect. And then finally, the sheriff's favorite tradition, destruction. Yeah. The sixth tradition. Are you a fan of destruction, Mr. Braun? I have been known to dabble. Mm. Well, that may come in handy sooner rather than later. Mm. Sixth tradition says that you may not kill one another. Kindred does not kill kindred. The actual wording is somewhat vague on that point. Some kindred believe that only the eldest may break this tradition. Now, who is the eldest? Maybe it means the prince, but in this city, in the Camarilla, Prince Panhard and those she designates 
may take the lives of others, and only them. But not everyone enjoys the protection of the Kimria. The Anarchs, for instance, are not under our protective shield. A fair game, Mr. Braun. Thank you. But remember the first tradition, the masquerade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't get caught. Yeah, I mean, sorry. Domain and all that. Domain and all that. Six traditions. Masquerade, domain, progeny, accounting, hospitality, destruction. There will be quizzes. Oh. I didn't do so good at school, so... Well, perhaps you can remember these six simple rules. There are others, of course, more customs and courtesies than actual laws, but we'll get to all those soon enough. Cleave to the traditions, and all will be well, or, say it with me, don't get, get, get caught. caught. Excellent. I suppose a second corollary would be don't make it my problem. Mm. Fair. Some kindred believe mistakenly that adhering to the first tradition means that we don't allow any technology whatsoever in the Camarilla. And it is true that many of our elders prefer to use as little as possible we believe that it is the modern practice of wiretapping and surveillance that has brought on this new age of burning, this new inquisition to trouble us. So nobody expects you to stop looking at Facebook. Do they still use Facebook? I, Ugh, I don't. I don't know. Um, mm. No one expects you to stop looking at your mobile phones. It would be strange if you didn't have one. You're trying to pass as mortal. How would it look if someone offered you their phone number and you said, I don't have a phone? So, of course, we use them. But we never use them to discuss kindred affairs. Speak or text in code if you must. But if you fail in this and you are discovered, it could mean the end. I see you look troubled, Miss Kiem. You have a question? Oh, no, just so the rules are, we follow them and then what? Ah, uh, astute, full marks. Well, follow the rules and you get to continue being members of the Camarilla. And their protection. Mm -hmm. Your enemies become our enemies. It means that other kindred in our little club are bound by these same rules. They cannot touch you with impunity. They cannot intrude upon your domain. They cannot take what is yours. There are recourses available to you for those who transgress against you. And this enforcement is what makes us the stronger sect. Can the Anarchs have no such rule. If somebody were to act against you, what are the steps to exact such justice? An excellent question, Miss Coco. I'm pleased to see that you're no longer angry. If only there were one single answer. For the time being, since you're all going to work together, to do a few things for me. Should someone transgress against you in a way that you cannot take care of yourself, you may inform me. And I will do my best to see that justice is done. And what's the best way that you'd like to be contacted? Well, you know how to get a hold of me. I mean, I do. But for our associates, We'll take care of that before you're on your way, which won't be too long. Thank you for reminding me. Tonight, I'd like you to do something for me. I'd like you to visit a particular art gallery in the neighborhood of Chelsea. There's a, some VIP pre-opening event. It's a 
place that I haven't heard of, Kalita, the frosted glass. I know, I know. I've heard it's grammable, whatever that means. What style of art, do you know? Modern, I think. Hmm. But some rumor has re, what do you call it, spilling? Something? Yes, spilling tea. Spilling tea. Some tea has reached my ear. How can tea reach my ears? Shouldn't it be like on the plate or the, um, It's an expression. Mm. Well, we I have heard, we used to say through the grapevine, I don't know why that fell out of use. I have heard that some very unusual art is being exhibited there. Art that may have an effect on those who view it. So I would like you to please go there this evening, take a look around, and let me know what you discover. Now, when you say effect on someone, is that like emotionally or like magic bullshit? Well, that's what I want you to tell me. Ah, uh, it's magic bullshit. That means it's it would be a breach of a masquerade. It might well be. We might have a criminal in our midst. You might fight somebody yet. Hell yeah, let's do this. And we can do it quietly. Quietly. Hmm. I fold a few minor strings to get you on the guest list. You shouldn't have any difficulty getting inside. Now. <clears throat> what's, the <clears throat> what's the dress code? Well, you are, of course, attired perfectly and impeccably as always. Okay. And our new associate, Miss Coco, absolutely smashing. Perfect for a gallery opening. Thank you. Miss Kiem, they will be stunned. Mr. Braun. Eh. Looking at you, buddy. I suggest you make up some excuse. Yeah, uh, laundry day. Mm. Perhaps you're returning from a workout. I oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, maybe I'm an artist. You know, if we purposely rip some holes in you, in your clothing, then, you know, it's avant-garde. It's the only one I have. It'll be fine. You only have one shirt? Just in this color. Just the one? Do, do I don't need more shirts. What? Get off my case. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Respectfully. Now. Do this successfully. And you will enter into the time-honored custom of prestation. That means you have done me a favor. I will owe you something in return. Favors, or boons as the elders call them, mm. are the currency of our little club. Collect as many as you can. They can save you when things go badly. And they can be traded. Question. Is there some sort of clerk or, uh, you know, help from businesses? And I understand that there's accounting of sorts when you have mm. these boons. Who is the one in charge of making sure that that's accounted for. My understanding that the answer to your excellent question is that this varies from city to city. I myself have no experience with the kindred of any other place. I have heard that uh, in Chicago, the kindred who keeps the Elysium is responsible for their ledger. But here, here, the next time you are invited to Elysium, seek out Mr. Arturo. Whisper in his ear what you owe and to whom you owe it. But you mustn't be afraid to collect and trade these favors. you will not be invited to Elysium often. So you must keep your own books for the time being. You must be your own accountant. Something I think you know a great deal about, unless I miss my guess, Miss Coco. Oh, I know a great deal about it. I would go myself to this gallery to find out what's so intriguing about this artwork, but death of an Anarch Baron, Unrest, other affairs happening. I'm a little busy. 
Mm. Besides, I trust my child completely to represent me. Oh, daddy's proud. Yes, yes he is, Mr. Braun. And you would be too, had you such a child. I hope one night you will make Glassjaw as proud of you as I am of Kalita. Yeah. How is Glassjaw? He's doing all right. He's fine, I guess, but I just can't stand that guy. Understandable. What he um, lacks in couth, however, he makes up for in fierceness, ferocity. Yeah. Puts up a fight. Still, uh, still operating that underground, uh... Hey, 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 we don't talk about that. Mm. We don't talk about what? Mm. Nothing. Nothing, apparently. Wow. Interesting. But, yeah, Mr. Rafferty, if you mm. feel like getting your knuckles wet... I know you just said it's supposed to be a secret, but I feel like you left a lot of hints, and then also you're wearing arm wraps out in public. Oh, he's yeah. just a regular Tyler Durden, don't worry So I about think it's it. just, yeah, it's the, um, I, I appreciate that you got that reference, though, Coco. You have moved up in my books. I guess what I was trying to say is if you're trying to keep a secret, less clues next time. Listen, I know you're new to this whole thing, but there's a big secret that we gotta keep, and so anything else I'm just gonna let fly out of my mouth. Better that than the masquerade or whatever. Okay. Or whatever. I do have a question. Would this gallery be an auction where I may purchase one of these paintings? A little oh. research? Well, I have never known a gallery that was not interested in making revenue. That's what I thought. But um, I don't know. Well, if they do, I'll bring you back something nice. Well, you know what I like. Be careful. Respect the masquerade. Clean up any mess you make. Let me know what's going on. All clear? Aye, aye, Captain. Yes. Excellent. Kalita, would you mind showing our guests out? Of course. Always a pleasure. As you are getting ready to leave, he fishes around in his jacket pocket and hands out several business cards. They're very nice. Nice. Very expensive. They just have a phone number on them. <clears throat> That's how you reach me. Is there other ways to contact you? Oh, I have often wondered if it's true. Hmm. Do you not know how to use a phone? Oh, do you have a phone? I have a flip phone. I mean, that's why I asked. I'm not very good at it either. Do you have a phone? Yes. Can I see it? Oh, for what? I just wanted to check something real quick. Mine ran out of battery. I feel like this is a trap. <laughs> Try to operate it? Yep. Make a technology roll. Do you have any dots in technology? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> How many dots in Oblivion do you have? I have two. Roll two dice. Brick. One of which should be your hunger die. One success. Well, it works for a moment. And now it's a rather unattractive paperweight. Oh, it's smoking. Ugh. Just throw it over my shoulder. I can get another one. That was uh, a very effective, although somewhat naughty display. I'll leave you two to sort that out. Boons, remember. They can range from the very minor to the life-giving. Or, in our case, the unlife-giving. You could have just said. It was $980, so just the next time you get, just when, you know, if we're counting. Good luck. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, now, we're leaving. So, you lead them out? Yes. Back to the elevator. Let's return now then to the hotel lobby where you can make any last preparations or have any discussions you need to have before we go to the gallery. 
I mean, I mean, I know how to get there by train, but I uh, the subway. I assume someone's got a. My assumption is you have oh. a town car. Yes. Okay. You're uh, not taking this. All right. But that went well. Oh, was there a, a potential for it not to? <laughs> yes. Oh, damn! That you just said something. I tried. To, you were manspreading. Oh, yeah. So we met the approval of your sire. I don't know if it's approval, but tolerance for the moment, probably. I well, mean, that's... I guess it all depends on how this goes. Yeah. But is there a reason that your sire didn't just send you by yourself to investigate instead of gathering a group of us? Well, I mean, there's strength in numbers. Yeah. Um, should things go awry, I am not the type to engage in fisticuffs. Ah. Ah. And I'm, it, by the looks of it, it seems that we all have our areas of expertise. I'm a gardener. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you a gardener? No, I'm not a I'm a fucking fighter. You could have hobbies. I do have hobbies. I'm very layered and interesting. But that is beside the point. I'm actually intrigued by this now. Oh, I know. We're going to peel off your layers. I mean, I'd rather keep them on. <laughs> Well, I can assist in the uh, subterfuge and hurting people department, uh, if you wish. I'm good at surveillance. Oh, great. And uh, I'm good with people, and I can get us in anywhere. All right, so what it sounds like is we've got some surveying, some sneaking in, and then staying behind for backup. And what are you going to do again? Oh, um, I can sneak quite well. Okay. I don't have to go through the front door. Uh -huh, double penetration. I'm not sure this is oh, a really? back door sort of situation, though. Okay. Yeah, you don't. We won't know until we get there. Mm. But you know, the easiest way is usually right through the front door. I always say, act like you belong wherever you go, and people usually don't fuck with you. That I find that to be true. Kalita, you are calling the car? Yes. Okay. You don't have long to wait before a sleek black town car arrives at the front of the hotel, and you are ushered into its comfortable confines and on your way to Chelsea. This seems like an appropriate place to pause our vampire story for now. Hey everyone, I'm Yev, uh, here from New York City now. Uh, Victor sent me out here to do some tech work for a friend of his. I haven't quite met up with them yet, but, uh, but either way, very exciting to be sent on the location. Uh, now back to the blazing uh, Big Apple, as they call it. Lots of fun things about the, uh, the Big Apple. Uh, it's, got, it's got apples, uh, they're huge. Uh, the, the nice thing about it is I, I tend to retain my memory out here. Back on the West Coast, uh, I would lose entire days, uh, which was super strange uh, and, and very weird. Uh, but Victor never seemed to be bothered by that in my, my memory lapses, so that was good. Uh, it didn't affect my employment, uh, which is great. Uh, love everything about it, uh, I guess. And well, anyway, now that we're out here in the Big Apple, uh, I'm, uh, I'm helping some of his friends, uh, or at least I'm supposed to be, hopefully soon, uh, when they reach out. But um, I wanted to, to tell you uh, the same thing that I'm going to tell them, which is, uh, if you go to backblaze.com slash NY by night, that's N-Y-B-Y-N-I-G-H-T, you can start a free trial of Backblaze. We'll back up everything on your computer. It's your movies, photos, music, videos, contracts, covenants, I don't know, things that are important to fancy business people like Victor and I'm sure everyone out there uh, as well. And you'll have a copy of it available to you wherever you are, uh, maybe on your computer, maybe on your phone, maybe on your other mobile devices, iPads? I don't know. Something. Anyway, go to backblaze.com slash NY by night, N-Y-B-Y-N-I-G-H-T. Give yourself a free trial. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm Yev, by the way. Uh, don't know if we've met, but uh, I'm canon. Uh, Victor says that all the time. I'm not quite sure what that means, but, uh, but that's who I am. And we'll see you next time.
Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night. Season 2, Episode 1, A City That Never Sleeps. It's certainly not sleeping now. We're in Chelsea, on the west side of Manhattan, between 14th and 34th, from the Hudson River to 6th Avenue. Midtown West, with its famous skyscrapers, or just to the north of us, and we can see some of them in the gaps between the buildings. Greenwich Village and the West Village are just to the south. Chelsea is 24-7. It's a neighborhood that attracts a wide variety of people, residents and tourists alike. Vibrant and fast-paced, there's always a new restaurant, a new bar, a new club, a new gallery, something to wander into at any time of the day or the night. Now, if you're mortal, you can spend entire days here wandering from restaurant to gallery that show work from established and emerging artists. And if you're a vampire, you can do this too, but only after dark. The High Line, a park built on top of an elevated rail track, is a work of art in its own right, as are some of the area's more fashionable boutique shops. Chelsea is townhouses, low-rise apartment buildings, luxury condominiums, charming brownstones, and Art Deco masterpieces, its riverside piers, unusual museums, and tonight it's vampires too. Now, at the edge of a fashionable shopping street in Chelsea, situated between a cafe and a couture boutique, there's a small storefront window that affords a fragmented view of an austere, dramatically lit gallery through custom frosted glass. The unusual treatment on the glass renders it absolutely opaque when it's viewed from any angle except straight on. And then you can see inside. And it's unusual effect. There's a discreet card on the door of the gallery. VIP pre-opening and today's date. Now, your town car, driven by the loyal Wilcox, remains idled across the street unless you have other instructions for the driver. Wilcox, I don't know how long we're gonna be in there, so if you could just hang tight, but if you see any one of us running, be ready to floor it. You got it, miss. Watch the traffic. This place is, uh, you know, nobody slows down around here. Busy, busy, busy. Mm. Isn't it always? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you got my number. I sure do. Mm -hmm. Good luck in there. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Wilcox, was it? Yeah, yes, sir. Keep the engine running. Yes, sir. Keep the engine running, miss? Yeah. All right, so... Uh, do we, I mean, I have two lethal weapons right here, but uh, are we bringing in? Okay, but remember what Rafferty said. Like, we can't just masquerade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, what I'm asking is what you're packing. What are you carrying in? Oh, um, we don't all have something? I do. Oh, I do. Oh, perfect. I, then we all have something. We all have something. Again, I, I don't think that it's going to get to that, nor should it get to that. Let's just, like, go Maybe in and go out. Maybe some kind of code word. Stealth reconnaissance. Oh, okay. Code word? Should we have a code word? I don't know, like, get them. Uh, mm, too, too obvious. Okay, uh, action. Keep, let's, let, um, let's. Uh, fight. Mm. Go. Mm. Five, six, five, do like a number. Five, six, seven, eight. What? Are, mm, okay, just Why? don't start dancing. Mm. It'll be fine. I'll just look to your lead. Maybe. How about, uh, you know, the head nod and go, we go. Okay. Okay. Until we, this is like a working title. We'll find something. Sure, sure, sure. Because we should have one. All right, have we figured out what we're going to do? Um, I believe you said the front door is the easiest? Yeah, we're on the guest list. We'll go in, mm. take a look around. Um, Find the painting. See if anything is suspicious. Yeah. And I guess take it from there. Reconvene in front of the bathrooms. Okay. We need a meeting spot. 
Oh, do we know who the artist is, at least? I mean, well, we should have asked that. We <laughs> should have asked that. Hmm. Okay, so we have no idea. Kalita, there are people you can call. There are people I can call. But does it really matter? They, she or Cyrus said that we are on a list of the, to get in, so we don't really need to do any convincing. Right. No, oh no, we, we're going to get it, no problem. It's just... The point that I was trying How to make is to the, find? the first rule is to blend in, right? Don't yeah. break the masquerade. So it'd be smart to have the name of the artist so that at least you looked informed. But we don't know which painting we're looking for yet. Yeah, we have I don't to know. Feel it. Exactly. I thought we were just going to like walk around and, and just be like, oh, this one speaks to me when something like really feels kind of weird. Also, I feel like I've been to many, many art galleries, openings, birthday parties. I don't know who or what, how I got there, and it's, everyone seems okay with it as long as you're nice. I, it might be concerning if you don't know how you got somewhere. No, I mean, yeah. you know, I get what the you invite mean. version of it. I, I, you, you can just go places and not know what's why you're there. Anyway, I like the plan. Let's go in there, feel it out, yeah. see if we can find out which painting to look at, and maybe they'll have a little card or something on the wall. Yes, and if don't let anybody, because I've you know, run with these crowds, don't let anybody try to like intimidate you like they're so much better at art than you are. If you don't like, if you don't know what to say about something, just be like, hmm, seems pedantic, and then walk away, and then they will just believe you and won't ask you any questions. Got it. Okay. Really? Mm. Literally, you can say, make up, just pull up a word, call it that, with like a look of disdain, or just be like, oh, visionary, and walk away. And just don't give them a chance to like, you know, break down what you're saying. Got it, okay. Oh. You could, uh, you guys can bullshit this easily, it's fine. I mm. believe in you. It will be fine. Lead the way. Okay, remember, you belong here. I got a coat. You got a coat. Got it. Where'd you get a coat? Where'd you get a coat? Well, we passed the coat rack on the way out, so I just grab one. They're mortals, why? Resourceful, quick. I like you. Ready? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> In we go. In we go. Inside the gallery, there's a long room painted a subtle shade of blue and spotted with recessed, warm, incandescent light that highlights the works of art mounted on the walls. Some pieces are under glass with small, elegant cards describing them. And yes, there are shadows here. The displays include hot local talent, and each piece is invariably, and some would say outrageously, expensive. There are perhaps two dozen people here that you can see from the door. Curious VIPs with questionable taste, but deep pockets. Wealthy dabblers, people who might be artists themselves to judge by their eclectic attire. Art appreciators, perhaps some investors. As soon as you're in the door, you're greeted by a young man of college age wearing bow tie and a crisp white shirt offers you champagne on a tray. la -dee da Just take one. I'll just take one. You don't have to sing about it. One. Mm -hmm. Just to hold it. I'm good. A moment later, he's joined by another individual, a very tall, slender gentleman in a flowing robe-like shirt. Very, very short, well-clipped dark hair. Ah, uh, Miss Kalida, your reputation precedes you. Oh, thank it's you. an honor to have you here at the Frosted Glass. It is an honor to have me here. Uh, we were told to expect you in part of you four. Yes. Yes, my name is Carabo. I'm the owner. Uh, we're very excited tonight to have an incredible new talent among us. I think you'll be amazed. Everyone seems to be very, very impressed. Uh, it's my own discovery. Really? Yes, she's, um, I must say, she is unusual, uh, and so is her work, but well, I would love to get your opinion. I would love to know what you think. Oh, I and, would uh, love to see what you're talking about. Sure, sure, and you're, um, excuse me, uh, we haven't been properly introduced. My name is Carabo. Hello. 
This whole time I've been inching up to Karabo, and I'm very close to his ear. What wonderful lobes you have. So nice to meet you. Wow, thank you. Well, I've always been fond of them. One slightly lower than the other. Yeah, it's always been that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. What were we doing? What were we doing? Oh, I, uh, I'm Bron, here for the art. Do you also like my earlobes? Sure, mm -hmm. I've seen worse. Fair enough. Uh, you're here for the art. Yeah, 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 I love it. It's not, I, I mean, it seems pedantic, but... Uh... Uh, he's my plus one. Okay. Mm. Uh, Hi, I'm Kraba. Coco. Coco. Like the perfume. Yes. Mm. Or like, I suppose, the cereal, right? Uh, no? no? Perfume it is. Thank okay. you. Well, it's an honor to have you here, as I said. Please uh, be welcome. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, the fellow over there in the really badly fitting jacket is, I think, uh, a critic from, maybe from the Times, I'm not sure, or Time Out, I don't remember which one. It had Time in it anyway. Um, the artist is, oh yeah, there she is, right over oh, there. What's her name? He, oh, uh, she goes by Lizzie. Lizzie. Lizzie, I don't know Lizzie what. You said you found her in an unusual place. Where'd you find her? The Bronx. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, seriously. I wouldn't have guessed. Now, the individual that Carabo points to, uh, definitely memorable. She's slender, petite build. She has long, dark, unkempt, messy, maybe even unmanageable hair that almost obscures her face entirely. When she moves her head, you can just sort of see one eye peeking out from between the tresses. She's dressed in, um, well, it was probably a very, very expensive Italian designer dress at one time, but now it's in sort of shreds and tatters. It's been ruined. Someone's taking scissors or maybe a knife to it. Um, it hangs in strands and ropes and rags from her. Um, her nails are impeccable, and they're long and sharp. There's a gentleman standing next to her, a very tall gentleman, very broad gentleman, built a little like Braun, but even bigger. You know, a, you know a fighter when you see one. He, the way he carries himself, he'd be right at home in your place. Jim. He's wearing a, what looks like a, a designer letterman style jacket with lettering up and down one sleeve. It says, stay relevant. All right. See what I told you of like strategically placed cut holes? Fashion. Oh, like that dress. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's what you call fashion? To some circles, it's, I mean, it's avant-garde. It's just at least welcomed into the art crowd. Ooh. Okay, so do you want to go talk to the artist, or do you want to look at the paintings? Or? I can talk to the artist, unless there's another plan. At this point, I'd like to slip back into the shadows sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Well, the shadows here aren't deep enough to conceal you. Okay. But you can certainly get out of the light. I'd like to do that. I'd like to activate um, Cloak of Shadows if at all possible. Obfuscate, is that a possibility? Yes, it is. You can find a corner the very back of the gallery, not too far from uh, a couple who are admiring some of the paintings in that area. They're standing in front of a what looks like a big piece of concrete that's been removed from a wall someplace. And it's got um, a very beautiful work of graffiti in uh, multiple gorgeous colors, very intricate. It's hanging from metal chains on the wall. Awesome. They seem very, very absorbed in it. She's a middle-aged woman with uh, impeccable designer sense in her attire and her hair. He's a uh, 
man of average height, with short, cropped, very blonde hair, and a tired expression. A little, little dreamy look on his face as he's gazing at the piece of concrete that's been decorated with spray paint. Excellent. I slip away from the group. Hopefully no one sees me and I just kind of get over there and observe people from that spot. You are within earshot of this couple, but as long as you don't move, you cannot be seen in this little recessed corner of the gallery. Sounds like Kiem is approaching the artist. Mm. What is Kalita doing? I'm definitely looking around at the different pieces. Just a quick uh, glance to see if there's any one piece in particular mm. where people, more people are fixated on. So, this is your world. You must have gone to a thousand galleries in your lifetime and each one is a little different and yet at some level they are all the same and they are about displaying and selling art. Yes. You know just from your experience whether or not people are going to buy anything. In this particular gallery though, most of the paintings are going completely unnoticed. No one's paying any attention. But there are three where there are small groups of people clustered in front of each one, and everyone is staring at them appreciatively, making positive comments, and uh, they look a little hmm, lost in the art. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And Braun? Braun's going to go up to this uh, person who was identified as an art critic. Hmm. What does Braun do when he gets there? This individual, short, bad coat, thick glasses, notepad, turns and looks at you up and down and smirks. Help it all you. seems a bit pedantic, am I right? Pedantic? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I suppose. He pauses to make a note on his notepad. Yeah, um, hmm. If it's, if you're into that sort of thing, oh, okay. I don't know. I think the, uh, I think the surrealism kind of counterpoints the underlying metaphor, if you know what I mean. I do. Yeah. And also, I like art, and my name is Braun. G good to meet you. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is some of the best performance art I've seen in a while. So oh yeah. I'm impressed. I just wanted to to, to compliment you. you. Braun, you say your name is? Yeah. Yeah. Is I that, go by Braun. Is that with a U or a W? With a W, yeah. A w. Oh, like, mm, mm, well, some muscles. people say. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. actually B R O N because it's well sometimes because it's part of my last name. Whatever. Okay. Well, um. Uh, you look official and uh, nerdy, respectfully. If you were to say what would be like the most valuable piece in here, I know what it is, but what would you say? Well, the value of art, Mr. Braun, isn't mm, intrinsic. It doesn't derive from the pigments or the paints or the chalk or the materials. It's in how it makes you feel. That is pedantic. So the most valuable piece of art in here is the one that makes you feel the best. Oh. But if you're asking me which one is the most expensive? Yeah. Uh, probably the big chunk of concrete with the uh, sad looking graffiti over there. Whoa, what is that about? Like, what does it mean? I mean, it's an example of street art. It, it, I'll tell you what, why don't you go take a look at it and you tell me what you think it means. All right, I'm open to new experiences. Kiam, the artist and her taller, much taller associate, are standing slightly apart, watching all the people look at the paintings. She has a glass of champagne, but she doesn't appear to have consumed any of it yet. He's got his hands thrust into the pocket of his letterman jacket, and he looks like he would like to be someplace else, any place else. He clocks you as you approach nods. Awesome. I mean, all this is awesome. Yes, it's awesome. I turn to the woman with the hair, the artist. She swivels her head and 
with one hand and some fingers, parts the hair enough so that she can see you with one eye clearly. Hello, I wanted to speak with you about your amazing arts, and I want to stand close enough to her. Can I get a sense if she's also kindred? Hmm. Well, there have been some hints and indications, of course. And she stares at you with one emerald green eye. Let's see what you can discern. Would you like to use heightened senses? Heightened senses. Yes, I will okay. use... Well, it I doesn't guess. require a roll. Mm -hmm. You stare. In fact, you stare at each other. Her bright green eye and your eyes staring at each other. And you notice with your preternatural senses that there's no pulse at her throat. There's no breath escaping her mouth. She doesn't blink. I match her energy, lean down. Lizzie. Lizzie, you have wonderful hair. Thank you. Your, your art. Thank you. I've never been told that. Would you I mind? know what you are. And I know what you are. Why are you displaying it in this way? Where else would I put it? I want people to see it. I've heard there's been a strange effect your art has on people, on the living. Maybe yes, maybe no. Why don't you take a look? I will. What's your name? Again? I'm Lizzie. Lizzie, from the Bronx. How do you know that? Oh, the Tall, carrier. very tall, very tall man with the Stay Relevant jacket. Takes a step towards you and looms down over you. He has to look pretty far down, even in your heels, to see you clearly. Hey, we don't want any trouble. Too bad. But I'll be good. Before I walk away. Lizzie, this is an odd request. Can I have a bit of your hair? She recoils as if you slapped her. Are you a witch? I wish. It's just so pretty. Lizzie, is that a really good idea? Shh, I know what I'm doing. Is it a deal? Yes. Cool. Kalita. These groups of people that you've been observing have not moved from in front of the paintings that they're standing near. They don't take their eyes off the canvas at all. They do speak to each other, but it's only in praise of the art. They're not saying anything sophisticated or insightful as an artist would, mm. or even as a critic. They're just enraptured. It's beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. I want to take it home and look at it forever. Does it seem almost trance-like? Mm -hmm. An excellent question. Well, it isn't normal behavior. You don't recall ever being in a gallery before and having people react this way to any art, no matter how excellent it is. But, hmm. Wits and awareness, please. Oh no. Oh no. 
No, it's not bad. Five successes. That doesn't sound like an oh no. It was in the shadows. Sounds like an oh yes. <laughs> Oh, so it's, near, so it's near Coco. It's <laughs> Coco getting too close. I see, I see. So I thought her power affected only technology, uh -huh. but dice too. Dice are dice. technology, dice are technology, arguably. Okay, so five successes. Well, as I said, you've never seen anybody behave like this in a galley before. Of course, people get enraptured. They take delight and joy, but these people are transfixed. There is definitely something unusual going on here. Trance seems like a good word to describe it. I'm going to first try to get somebody's attention with awe to see if that breaks. To see if you can distract them away from the painting? Yes. Mm. All right. You don't need to roll for awe. Once it's activated, it's activated for the entire scene. How are you attempting to distract them? Are you just moving to their line of sight? Are you speaking? Are you touching them? I will come up to a group that's standing there and I'll lightly brush up against somebody's shoulder mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. ask. Beautiful painting, isn't it? A, a work of art. Make a roll, please, that is your charisma and add dice equal to your presence. Charisma and I got zero successes. <laughs> no successes at all. What's on the hunger die? Is it blank? Uh, yes. Okay, so the roll is merely a failure and not a bestial failure. So you have um, only two options. You can either accept the failure and try something else, or you can spend a point of willpower, superficial willpower damage, to re-roll up to three dice. I'll re-roll. Okay. And that's two successes. Two successes. It's very odd. You activate awe, you reach out, touch, you speak. But your eyes are drawn away from the individual and towards the painting, and only at the last minute do you drag your eyes away from it and resume what you were doing. The individual doesn't look at you. He nods and agrees. Yeah, amazing, I have to own it. I mean, they're not even asking that much for it, but I gotta own it. How much are they asking for it? Surprisingly little in your judgment. Hmm. Now, you haven't taken a direct look at the paintings, deliberately, I yes. suspect, but um, the prices are under what you would think a gallery in this part of New York would charge for anything, however poor it might be. Hmm. Coco, you are in the shadows, standing, observing, watching. Mm -hmm. Of course, you've been able to notice that people are clustered around several of the paintings, and you are near the couple who are talking about the big piece of concrete graffiti. You're close enough to overhear the woman say to the man next to her, are we ever going to get her out of there? She came to see me. What? Yes, she came out of the Bronx for once. Crawled out of her, I don't know. Who knows where she's sleeping now, but... Can't you do something? It's been a long time. And he says, Be patient. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We'll bring her home yet. She can't run the night over there forever. Kim. I start to move towards the closest painting. Mm -hmm. Before I do, I stop by Braun. Yeah, the big uh, rock. That's the, the expensive one. Okay, yes, thank you. Good job, great job. Yeah. I pull you away a yeah, little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. I've talked to the artist, 
and she seems quite agreeable, definitely kindred. Oh, oh, okay. So that's red flag. Sure. Um, I'm gonna go look at some art real quick to do a thing. Um, but maybe it was our mission just to see if there was something happening, a breach of the masquerade, or was it to stop it? I think it's to stop it. If we see something going on, it's technically illegal and we can if we want. The okay. big guy next to the artist is looking at you both. He's I not think... taking his eyes off the two of you, and as he watches, still not breaking eye contact, bends down to whisper something to Lizzie, the artist. I have to go look at some art now. Okay. Would you like to join me? Yeah, 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 yeah. We go to the closest painting mm -hmm. near where we are. Sure. You Let's join the little throng of people. Yes. Okay. Looking at the painting, both of you, please make a roll. I'd like you to roll dice equal to all your unspent willpower. So if you haven't spent any willpower yet this evening, you take one die for every blank box of willpower. If you have spent willpower, you don't get that die. No hunger dice. No hunger. Just black vampire dice. Oh, well, let's pretend like this. Okay. Did anybody get at least two successes? No. Zero, Zero successes? One. One success. You got one success, which wasn't enough. But if you want to, I'll make you a devil's bargain. You can succeed at a cost. And the cost will be whatever's happening to Braun won't happen to you, but you're gonna make a scene. Or you can just accept the outcome of the die roll. Up to you. I take the cost. You take the cost, okay. You succeeded the cost. Braun. Yeah. You stare at it. Yeah. It doesn't look, it's just smears of color and daubs of paint and pigment. It's almost like some childish finger painting, but it's the most beautiful thing you have ever seen. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. It's magnificent. And you don't seem to be able to look away from it. Yeah, you know, I really see it now. It's like, at first I thought, oh, this fucking thing, I could do that. But like, the technique, it's not pedantic at all. Kim, you look at it. And you can feel yourself drawn to it. It's beautiful. It's divine. It's angelic. No. No, it's not. It's demonic, it's evil, it's foul, it's profane. I walk up to it. Oh. I use my lethal body strength in my hands to rip across the front of the portrait. No! <gasps> Multiple things happen at once. From your position at the back of the gallery, your attention is drawn by shouts and cries of dismay and brawn outcry. Kalita, it of course attracts your attention from where you are standing. You tear it, you rip it to shreds. It comes off the wall, canvas and paint begins to fly everywhere like confetti. People are horrified, shocked. Lizzie, and the big guy is there. One minute, he's where he was, and the next minute, he is right next to you, and he's gonna try to take you down. There's gonna be a fight. <clears throat> so, what's everybody's intentions at this point? You have seen all this transpire in the blink of an eye. Kalita? Carabo, um, I would like to purchase all of these paintings. Yeah, even the, even the one that she, she wrecked? Especially the one that she wrecked. Yeah, you got it. You break it, you bought it. Wow, what? Why did you bring this? Who is she? 
Uh, they're performance artists, uh, you know, they... I can't they, believe this. I've never seen anybody do this before. But isn't it spectacular? Yeah, it's great, but you're really going to make good? Of course. Okay, fine. Whatever they asked, I'll double Oh, it. man, I need champagne. Coco? Um, I'm going to walk you, up you. to the couple. Actually, no, I'm not going to walk. I'm going to stay. And I'm actually going to activate um, Compel. Compel works with eye contact. So then I'm going to walk up to them and, and look at them. I'm not going to look at the painting, though. Okay. It only affects one person at a time, so you need to choose him or her. And compel is only a one word, a very, okay. very short command. I'm so going to go to her. It's free, no particular role mm -hmm. required. Um, uh, sorry, no rouse check required. You're going to go to her, look her in the eye, and say what? Walk. Hmm. Okay. Your role is charisma plus dots equal to your dominate. Charisma and dominate versus intelligence and resolve. Two successes. One success. One success. What? You two have a choice to make. You can accept the results of the roll. You can spend another point of uh, willpower, take temporary willpower damage to re-roll, or since you did achieve at least one success, you can succeed at a cost. And the cost is this. She will walk but there will be a reaction from her companion. I think I'm gonna spend a willpower there. Mm -hmm. So take the point of superficial damage. How many unspent willpower does that leave you with? Um, well, that's interesting. Um, a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two, three, All right, re-roll up to three regular dice. Jesus, these are cursed. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Amen. <laughs> so, it's unusual that a mortal can resist your supernatural will. Normally, they do as they're told instantly. But something about her is different. Something in her pushes back. Don't you dare tell me what to do. I'm sorry. I thought this you were is my daughter's. Else. This is my daughter's. My is daughter it? did this, and I'm going to enjoy it. This is your daughter, Lizzie. No, not... No, of course not. Does I this apologize. look like anything that... No. What's her name, then? Maybe you've heard of her. She's a very famous tagger in this city. She goes by the name of Seraph, like the font. Seraph. I actually haven't heard of her. Well, too bad for you. Hmm. Braun. Yeah. I have a very important question. Now that the painting is mutilated, is my brain still fuggy? <laughs> the painting is destroyed. The effect ends. <gasps> oh, magic bullshit. And, and you come back to yourself just in time to see that big guy try to take down Kim. Kim, he's playing for keeps. He's not fooling around here. And you know that if he does what he wants, you're gonna be badly hurt. Do you want to defend yourself by getting out of the way, dodging? Do you want to counterattack and try to take him out before he takes you out? Or do you wanna do something else? My main concern isn't with the large man. My main concern is getting back to Lizzie, because we made a promise. I'm going to use my cat's grace to try to duck mm. around him to get to Lizzie, if she's still around. Interesting. You also have rapid reflexes, which is very, very Double helpful trouble. in not being surprised. So let's do this then. Let's make your roll dexterity. That's four dice for that attribute and athletics. So that's a total of seven dice, one of which should be your hunger die. I will roll for the big guy. <sighs> He's got rather a lot of dice. Uh, but his roll wasn't 
particularly noteworthy. He rolls three successes. I also have three successes. Mm. Tie goes to the active character. So, unfortunately, you're not able to duck around him. You try, you move, you're fast, you're lithe, you're quick, but he reaches out an arm, <laughs> cuts you across the midsection, and pushes with incredible strength. And through the frosted glass window, you go. <laughs> out into the street, and now there's chaos. So, uh, you will take, uh, it's only a window. Um, you will take, after having, you'll take uh, one point of superficial damage, so you're not badly hurt at all. You're still in possession of your faculties, and in a few moments, you'll be able to choose to do something else. Bron, do you have a reaction? Hey, 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 big guy! And I'm gonna come up behind him and grapple him from behind. You wanna try to grapple? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. strength and brawl. Yes. Um, you have a specialty, I believe, that comes into play here. I do, for grappling! For grappling. Let's see if he can break it. Ooh, maybe. Three successes. Also three, but I'm the active player this time. You are the active kindred Suck it. in this confrontation. Mm. And so, with practice ease, pin his arms behind him and hold him fast. And I shout out, fuck up the paintings! Coco, what do you want to do? I'm going to retreat back into the shadow and try to run my hand along the walls to see if there's a fire alarm to pull. Mm, there certainly is a fire alarm. I'm pulling that so yeah. that I can clear people out of the way. It's one of those inviting red little boxes with the handle. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You're going to yank down on that? Oh, yes. The bell rings, and the water comes down. So, Kalita. I would like to find that art critic, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use the forgetful mind on him. The forgetful mind. I believe you have to make a rouse check. You have to summon the power of your blood to utilize that. Uh, that's a blood die. Mm -hmm. Hunger check is. Uh, is it blank? If it's blank. If it's blank, it's failure. Oh no. So you do get hungry. You're now at two hunger, and you hear a little voice inside your head. That's my girl. Take care of business. Clean up the mess. But you know, you could always just drink him dry leave no evidence of your feasting. Maybe once this is done, let's see how this goes. Well, forgetful mind, you don't have to roll for the effect because he is a mere mortal person. Mm. What do you want to do? How do you want to rewrite the memories? The second you leave here, and you are going to leave here is because the alarm's going off, you're going to forget that you are ever here, and you are not going to write about this place. Where was I? You were uh, on a little lover's tryst. Oh yeah, I was with Marion. You were with Marion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Marion. You sure do. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Never so. gonna write about this place ever. Nah, the art was crap anyway. I know. Yeah. You can go now. I'll, I'm gonna go to Marion. As I said, the fire alarm has gone off. There is water coming down from the sprinkler system. Carabo, the gallery owner, is howling in dismay, clutching his head at the destruction raining down around him onto the paintings. The two individuals that you were overhearing and that you spoke to look at each other, look up at the water, and they laugh. <laughs> ah, New York, New York. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Hand in hand, they're going to try to move past you and out the back door. Do you let them go? Right now, yes, because I have to um, protect this other group and make sure that we get out of here. So, you've got a hold of a very angry, very strong individual. He's so strong that he can't possibly be human. Oh, free game. Do you want to keep trying to hold him? Uh, I'm going to try and suplex him. I'm going to bend him over backwards, knock his little noggin on the floor behind me. Let's do it. He's going to try to break free, 
and throw you in the opposite direction. He's gonna try. Four successes. Oh, it's the same thing. Strength and... Strength and brawl. Great. Oh. Borrow it. One, two, three, four, five successes. Five successes. Well, you are the victor in this contest. Yes! You send him and wherever you want him. So I, I fully grab his waist and do a back bend, and because he is taller than me, his head hits the floor sooner than mine Ooh, does. It hits it's, it with a very satisfying thud. You are a dead man. You are a dick. And I'll punch him. And you'll punch him. Uh, make it strength and brawl. Yeah. He's going to try to slide out of the way on the floor. <laughs> Kim, are you headed back in? Or are you doing something else? I want to head back in. Six successes. I want to spend the willpower. I got five. Spend the willpower point and re-roll up to three dice. Three of the failed dice, just not the hunger die. Copy. Whoa, whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes! Oh, he almost gets away from you. Not you this time, suck on my undead dick! You pound his face. The back of his head slams against the floor. Making my own eyes. Ow! Oh, I'm gonna kill you. Kim? I'm heading back in. People are trying to rush out the front door. Pushing back here, you now become aware of the sound of a fire alarm ringing. People are stopping on the street to look around. They're not sure exactly what's going on. There doesn't seem to be a fire, but people are coming out of this gallery and they're soaking wet. Through the broken window that you came through, you can see Braun pounding on the big guy. You can also see Lizzie standing right behind him. What do you want to do? Going for Lizzie. Back in through the out window? Yes. So you leap through the broken window and you're headed for Lizzie. What's your plan? What do you want to do when you reach her? I want to tackle her. I want to grapple her and get her under our control. Okay. Before you do, let's check in with Kalita. You've made arrangements to cover the price of the paintings, mm -hmm. the damages. Carabo has disappeared into the back office, presumably to try to turn off the fire alarm, mm -hmm. or maybe to call the fire department. What next? I'll follow him back there. Follow him back there. What about you, Coco? Um, actually, noticing what's going on, I, I, I'm actually going to go chase after the, the parents. I'm going to go out the back door. You're going to follow them out? Yeah back out into the tiny two-car space parking area behind. Okay, let's hold that thought. Kim, this is a physical attack, is that right? Yes. Fists, feet, nothing more? Or are you going to employ any other powers? I think if I can get a hold of her, I would use my strength from lethal body. Hmm. Well, she's kindred, so mm. that won't do much to her. Right. But we'll take it as red that you are attacking as hard as you can. So okay. your pool is Strength and Brawl, okay. which is, I believe, six dice. If I'm trying to grapple, can I get my extra dice for Your specialty? My you specialty absolutely is also can. Grappling. Hey. Go ahead. Dice. She gets four successes. I'm gonna spend a willpower <laughs> to re-roll mm -hmm. three. That was zero. I, I had one success. One, that was one. Wait, how many successes did she have? Four successes. Four. You could tie and you're the attacker. Right. Nope. Good. No. And Only two. Only two successes to her four. What she does isn't really an attack, however. Not as such. Instead, she uses both hands to part the hair away from her face and stare at you with both eyes. Hmm. Please make another roll. It's a pool made out of your composure 
plus your intelligence, both of which are attributes. No skills are involved in this. Two successes. Two successes? Yes. One success. You feel something that you can't see, something invisible, a uh, force, a power, um, slam into what? Your soul, your mind, your beast, you're not sure, but whatever she intended to have happen does not happen. And that seems to surprise her a little bit. Coco, out the parking lot, mm -hmm. okay? The couple is uh, still laughing, they're soaking wet. Uh, the man has taken off his jacket, he's trying to wring the water uh, out of the sleeves. The woman uh, is on her cell phone trying to figure out if it still works because it's wet. They're paying no attention to you. They're standing to either side of a silver sports car. Uh, any shadows, like parking lot, well, brightly Well, we are lit. in the parking lot, so there is a, there is a single feeble street light on the sidewalk, but it's quite dark out here. Quite dark indeed. Excellent. Um, I am going to call upon Oblivion, and I'm going to start using our uh, Ards of Armon to tie, like, take one tentacle and like start wrapping them together. Hmm. Well, first things first. Hold that thought, okay. and let's check in with Kalita in the office with Carabo. Carabo is uh, reading the instructions uh, from a small book about how to turn off the fire alarm. <laughs> I can't believe that this is happening. I can't believe it. Kalita, what, what am I gonna do? Um, I'm gonna be a laughing stock. They're gonna write about this. I'm gonna be in, oh wow, I'm gonna be in every crappy magazine in the city. You know what you should um, do? What? You should listen to everything I'm gonna say to you right now. As well, I you're the one, okay, I'm activate. listening. Do you know how to turn off the fire alarm? Mesmerize. I can't understand these instructions. Activate Mesmerize. Ooh. It's not wet in here. The sprinklers don't extend to the office, mm. so you're not getting any damper in here. Mesmerism. So you'll need to make the roll. What do you intend to do? Make the rouse check first. Okay. Uh, it's a bestial failure. Well, it's only on the only on your hunger check oh, or oh, your oh. rouse check, so you can't get a bestial failure on that. Okay. Actually, but wait, no, this is if it's a skull. Success. That's a success. I'm sorry. Is it an onk with fangs? Yes. Yes, it's a success. Okay. So you do not get okay. hungrier. Your hunger remains at two. Okay. So uh, his eyes glaze over, and he listens to whatever you say next. I'm gonna need you to do a few things for me. Yeah, you name it. You just bought the half the place. I know. Maybe the whole place. You're gonna give me the location and contact info for all these artists. Okay. You wanna buy more of this stuff? Maybe. Yeah, sure. He uh, rummages around on the desk, not really glancing away from your eyes for very long. And, comes up with a few pieces of paper. Um, I mean, this is how I, this is how I got to get in touch with Lizzie. Thank you. And um, uh, anyone besides Lizzie? Well, I don't know how to get in touch with Sarah. She just sort of shows up whenever. Does she? Yeah. What else do you know about her? Well, she's got a name like the font. <laughs> Charming. Yeah. No, she's she's some punk tagger out in the Bronx. She's. Um, I mean, she's big with that crowd. I mean, huh. it's a, it's an up and coming art form. Some people really consider it a, a legitimate form of expression and she's okay. among the leading. Okay. You don't care about any of this, do you? No. I'll tell her that you're looking for her? No, you're not gonna tell her I was here. I mean, you you're just, not gonna you tell just anybody. missed her, her mom and dad. They just left, I think. We'll handle that. But okay. you're not gonna tell anybody about tonight. Well, I mean, I think they're gonna hear about it anyway. Yeah, not from you. Oh, no comment. Yeah. And the last thing I need you to do is bare your neck for me. Kinky. He pulls down on the robe-like shirt and offers it to you. And Kalita steps in close and takes a bite. 
You sink your fangs into his flesh. Take what you want. A few delicious sips of the exquisite red liquid trickles down your throat. How much do you take from him? How much hunger do you satisfy? Just one. Just so you're just taking the edge off. Yeah. Just in case. Mm-hmm. And I make sure to uh, close up that wound. He's transfixed by the experience. And he's unhappy when it's over. Hmm. Take away a hunger die. You're now at hunger one. Coco, out in the parking lot. Let's do first things first, the rouse check. Summon up the power of your blood. Uh, success. A success. Is it an onk with fangs? Just an onk. Just an onk. Then you avoid the nasty side effect that sometimes happens with oblivion. So, you summon forth the arms of Araman. What is it that you want to do? Bring them closer to me. I don't want hmm. them to like escape. So you're creating one, one big shadow one. tendril, one long rope of animated darkness, and you are maneuvering it through the air to encircle them. They're very surprised by this, of course, as you might imagine. They're pulled close together, and the woman gasps. The man thrashes a little uselessly against the grip of the shadow tendril. He looks at you and says, and now you can see his fangs. You have no idea who you are screwing with. Oh, I'm sure I'm about to find the fuck out. I'm I'm, gonna squeeze harder with the the tentacle. I'm sure the fuck you are. Meanwhile, back in the gallery. Yeah. So, let's start with Kiem. Lizzie has been very surprised that you withstood whatever she was doing, and she is beginning to back away from you, still soaking wet. Let's remember that the alarm is still going off. All the other people in the gallery have fled by now. There are people who stop out on the sidewalk every few moments to look inside and say, what the fuck? I don't know, performance art, right? Who knows? Braun and the big guy are still entangled. What do you want to do? I'm going to try one more time to grapple Lizzie, but this time I want to try to step past her and get her from behind. Ah, I see. You want to be quicker than she is. Oh, she doesn't want to have any of this. She's going to try to twist out of your grasp. Go ahead and make strength and brawl. Now, there is a risky thing that you could do if you wanted to. You can tempt fate or fortune. You can make a rouse check. If you fail it, you will get hungrier. But regardless, you can summon the power of your blood and add two extra dice to your pool. Your call. I'll do it. Make a rouse check. Success. You don't get hungrier, and you can add two extra regular black dice to the roll. Two successes. Six. Six successes. Perhaps, in a way, redeeming the earlier failures of the night. She tries to twist away, and she is quick, but you are faster. Your hand catches her, you spin her around, you grip her, and you hold her tight, one arm behind her back, the other around her throat. Let me go, witch. You made a promise. This is not my fault. No. Look over. Huh? What are you going to do? First, I just take a little, I use my... Hand that's in front. I rip off. You're gonna pull out some hair. Just a little bit. Ah! Braun, you 
and your sparring partner are still going at it. You're going to continue to try to punch him? Are you going to let him up? Are you going to hold? What do you want to do? So uh, right now I've got the total advantage, uh, and so I just need to make some distance. I know that I've got other friends in other locations. So uh, while he's down on the ground, I'm going to lift him up by the armpits and chuck him at the concrete slab that is hanging from some thin wires from the ceiling. Okay, that's a strength and brawl. Yeah. All right. His counter is going to be to bring both his feet up in front and to kick you as far as he can in the opposite direction. Okay. Three successes. Ooh, he gets hungrier. His fangs distend from his mouth. His eyes take on a bestial look of hate. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I'm gonna kill you. Six successes. Oh. What do you got? Three. Three successes. Do you want to spend willpower to reroll? And can you can you at least match six if you, even if you're successful? I could. I'm gonna do it. All right. I have to get all three. Oh, it was so close. It was so close. I tell you, it's five, but could have been a six. It's like being hit by a city bus. <laughs> feet come up under you. They catch your chest. You feel bones break and splinter inside you. You're thrown up and away, and you hit the ceiling with your back. <laughs> crunch! And then fall <clears throat> the ten feet back down to the gallery floor with a thud. Oh, holy shit! You take three points of superficial damage from the impact going up and then down again. <gasps> oh, help. Out in the parking lot. You're going to regret this. Am I now? Release me now and I'll forget about it. Who are you? That's your opening gambit. Coco, you need to make a roll for us, please. Intelligence plus awareness. Mm -hmm. Three successes. One, two, three, four successes. Four successes. Something very, very strange happens. Out of the corner of your eye, you see it just in time. Flames, fire erupt from the wall behind you. Orange, red, and yellow tendrils of death come arcing and licking out towards you, and then they're gone. <laughs> what was that? enough to make you lose concentration on the shadow tendrils. The arm vanishes, goes back into the shadow. Run, Angela, I'll deal with this. Kalita, you've had your drink. What do you want to do? You know you've only got a limited amount of time before this alarm summons emergency vehicles. Right. Uh have all the paintings been destroyed? All the paintings are wrecked. Good. They no longer exist. Uh, as I'm exiting and just looking at the scene, I'm just, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. A little late. A little late for that single. Which one was that? It's the fight single. Oh. Oh, I thought that was our run signal. Oh. <laughs> fight or run. An interesting conundrum because you're in it now. This is, I think, an excellent place to pause our vampire story for now. 